Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody, for the 50 Questions Friday on the 15th of October, 2021. Well, welcome. Happy Friday. Um, and again, if you are here live, be sure to drop your questions into the question tab. And otherwise, over on the chat side, please do feel free to connect with one another here. Uh, let's see. So, as usual, let's uh, let me turn off my notifications here. All right. So, as usual, let's take a quick journey into the heart space. So, what we call the Trinity breath are the three breaths to move the consciousness from the head back into the physical heart where we begin. All right, so close your eyes if you wish. Just makes it easier to go into the heart space. Now putting your attention onto your physical heart and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. And then connecting heart to heart to creation, breathing in that light of creation into the heart and that third breath breathing in from both creation and the earth at the same time you become a column of light that's grounded connected and you are in the heart space <clears throat> All right, so we have a hello from Washington State, from Hawaii. I know there's people here from all over the place. Thank you all for being here today. And a lot of friends that are close by as well. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and start with the questions from the website or from the emails. So when we do send out the emails, for a lot of people who aren't able to make it, they like to just send their questions in here. So we'll start here. And again, if you're live, please do put your questions on the questions tab. Uh, let's see. This one's from Michaela. Does the specific programming of a ring or generator get stronger over time as you continue to program it? Um, so basically, with the with the programming of the tools, the setting of intentions into the tools, um, the intentions are only held and broadcast in the spherical forms, um, such as the tensor field generators. Uh, those are the ones because of the geometry. You can put your intentions into there. It's just a touch, a voice, and an intention speaking into the generator or the Gaia sphere. Your intentions to broadcast now. With the tensor ring, it won't hold intentions, but it does work with your intent. So basically, you know, if you're using a ring and you have a ring that you are, let's say, doing work with on your shoulder and you place it there, you have the intention of doing that work with your shoulder. Um, now versus a generator where you can speak your intentions into it and it holds and broadcasts the intention. And so the question was, does that get stronger over time? Um, not necessarily, but your allowing makes it stronger. Your intent working with that generator can make it stronger. Um, so then it goes on, uh, the question goes on about asking if you can program it for specific use, but then in a different setting, program it for another use. So that is perfectly, perfectly fine that if you are, if you have your tensor field generator and you want to program it for peace and prosperity and creativity in your home and you have your intentions that you place into that generator in your home and then you take it to work and at work you want to have your intentions like let's say if you're just um you know clear communication and understanding heart-to-heart -heart connections whatever it is then you can place that in the generator for while you're at work and you can put in um 
unlimited number of intentions into there and they're not going to interfere with each other um they're going to they're going to work in the highest and best for you um, so you can fill your generators with intentions let's see so then the next question is what are some of the best items for working with the magdalene sophia rose love energy the chalice rings um yeah totally the chalice rings are are the ones to work with with that magdalene sophia rose love energy um the chalice rings are that crystal clear pure pure light um and it's interesting that over the weekend we actually had a few people um that picked up the the chalice ring and that work with those energies the particularly the mag the magdalene the the rose all that and that's exactly what they were seeing in those chalice rings as well. Um, let's see. And then the third and last question from this email. Uh, let's see. I've been doing the universal light meditation, the one that we have on the Twisted Sage website. I can feel it in my physical body and it feels lighter, but it's almost as if my head and my mind, as well as love frequency, aren't being brought over with my body. Is there a thing that I can do to have any love activations that could bring them all into balance? So basically, um, any of the, so let me step back here, that universal light meditation, um, that one is actually a little bit more of a heady meditation to me. It's not, um, it's not as much as just being in the heart and allowing basically what i would say with that universal light activation is that you do it once and you're good from there i mean i do know a lot of people who listen to it you know every night before they go to bed and everything but simply um you know listening to it once kind of gets you mentally there for what that universal light activation does all the work happens that first time and from there in order to be more heart based into it and moving your consciousness out of the head is just doing the trinity breath and being in that heart space and from there just being um just allowing just being is is really the place to be for that more of that love energy that heart energy to come in it's just being in the heart space you can um you know and and whatever you're drawn to how to work with that from there but one thing might be to be in the heart and imagine that infinity that figure eight going from the heart to the head from the heart to the mind that's maybe one way to help to bring that mind into the heart to to make that connection well let's see and then we had i think we had one more question here or one more um email with a question so yes okay uh this question is from may uh so may asks um well may says you mentioned that you used to have a full-size merkaba for people to get into um a copper star tetrahedron and may is wanting to create um her own for standing sitting or is asking if one of the larger 26 inch rings would be better i'm hesitant to make my merkaba simply out of how much space it takes and your rings take up no space so um Let's see, and yes, I'm familiar with the sacred heart meditations as that's why I became interested in making a large Merkaba this past year. So, you know, when we used to make the, the larger Merkabas out of, um, you know, out of copper tubing, PVC, it's when I used to go around and teach the Merkaba meditations and have people stand inside of a star tetrahedron that um, just help them to have the visualization of how that star tetrahedron structure, when you reactivate your Merkaba, it is the size of the tip of it is one hand above the head, 
fingertip to fingertip wide. And then the bottom tip, base tip is one hand below the feet. That's how the Merkaba is seen. And so you don't actually need to have a, a full size, life size Merkaba field to do any kind of meditations or energy work in um, because really it is simply there as a reminder of your own Merkaba field. So use your own Merkaba field instead of building a physical one. And all you do, um, we have a website, crystalmerkaba.com. And crystalmerkaba.com, or, or you can go to the resources page on Twisted Sage, and there's the Merkaba page there, the links. Um, or on YouTube, there's a bunch of different videos that we've done through the years on the Merkaba activation. And I would choose the, the newest, or you can go through all of them. Um, but once you activate your Merkaba field, then it's just um, going into the heart space and just remembering that field around you. And that's how you can work with it. So between having a tensor ring, a large practitioner ring, and a giant Merkaba star, I would totally go with the practitioner ring just because it's um, there's so much more that comes through the tensor rings than would come through a Merkaba geometry, especially if you already have your Merkaba field activated. Um, then, you know, the, the structure is, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, um, it's just kind of a, it's just for the mental. But in reality, you have your Merkaba activated. Just checking if there was any more questions here. Okay, we're good. So, anyway, and just checking in and seeing everybody who's here. Albuquerque, sunny California. Hey, Denver. Hey, Samson. Australia, British Columbia, Maine, Western Australia, Sweden, Colorado, Idaho. Fantastic. Well, Florida. So we have some great folks on here today. So please do hang out in the chat. And if you're watching this after the fact, um, join us sometime live. All right, so we're gonna go through and answer questions that are here on the chat side. Uh, so Susan, once I transform my water with the water rings and pour out some of it into another container, how long does it hold this new frequency? So basically your water will hold, it's, it's kind of like a crystal. So if you think about like a crystal where you can program a crystal and your crystal is all clean and clear and everything, and you take your crystal out into the world with you, and you have it and sit it down on your desk at your office, and you know, and maybe the people are just in foul moods, and you know, and and all the stuff, and just funny energy running around that absorbs into the crystal. Same with your water. So basically, you can have your water clean and clear. Samson, thank you for the El Dorado water. Oh my goodness. Samson, the water shaman, hooked us up with El Dorado water. This has actually the, been voted the number two best water in the world. Good stuff. Get a hold of El Dorado if you don't have some. And it's in recycled bottles. I'm sorry, that's my little plug for El Dorado water. Love the stuff. So once you have your water energized, clean, cleared, all the fun stuff, it will stay that way depending on what outside energies are acting with it. You can put it in a bubble. So go into the heart space, imagine a bubble around your container of water, take it to work, take it anywhere you want, take it on the subway, and that should hold the energetics in it better than if it was just sitting there exposed to the environment. So totally can put a bubble around your water. And then it will hold its frequency indefinitely basically until something outside acts upon it. Uh, JR, is anchoring a column of light into a power box on the street just as effective as putting a Wi-Fi ring on it? Yes, totally. So when you anchor the columns of light, 
you're bringing everything that the tools are into that column of light. So um, if you want to change the electrical in your house, look outside for where, outside your home, where the green, green transformer box is sitting out in your yard or the neighbor's yard or an apartment complex, wherever that transformer box is, anchor a column of light into it and that'll shift the electrical in your home. So simple as that. And thank you for asking that question, JR, because yeah, that's huge. Because that's what we want people do to do with these tools is their training wheels. They're, they're meant to be for self-empowering. So man, the columns of light are are huge. They're powerful. Um, so so yeah, please do play with those columns of light. And JR, anchoring a column of light using the golden, golden light, golden fire and light dowsing rod from the previous question. Yes, yeah, so basically when when you do the light anchoring that that we teach whether it's on um, the light anchor 3.0 video again if you go to twistedsage.com and go to the resources page there will be an entire page on light anchoring um, with links and videos and everything um, when you do the light anchoring with the way that you receive the attunement from that golden fire and light dowsing rod or the golden fire and light wands or the quantum healer um, basically once you have that attunement that knowing of what that column of light is you receive that that sacred heart activation of the golden fire um, then when you anchor the columns of light you're bringing those energies through and that is so much more powerful than just using a column of light um, you can even go to the wings of talk and there is also a meditation on the wings of talk to where you can create a column of light uh, this is the new wings of talk we'll talk about in a minute um, you can even use that wings of talk to create a column of light and that one to me i love using the wings of talk to anchor a column of light and again you don't need the physical tool that um, when you go to the product page for the wings of talk there's the video there that walks you through the attunement the knowing of what the quantum tool is so you can use that quantum tool and when you create a column of light with the wings of talk to me it is it's bringing through a lot more for for people for souls so if you want to anchor a column of light you know just for electromagnetics or just for water the standard golden fire and light wands are perfect. That, that video process to anchor columns of light are perfect. But if you're working with people, I would suggest using the wings of talk and anchor that light because then there's so much more support for all the souls within that space. And it is the same as the light anchoring of the golden fire and light wands, but just a lot more. Um, let's see, Philip, can you access the previous frequencies from the Alchemist Pendant? Yes, so basically every tool that we create builds upon the previous tool. And so the Alchemist set, the Alchemist Pendants or the Divine I Am, whichever, you know, whatever of these newer frequencies that you're using, it does contain everything that we've created before are all found within the Alchemist sets. And basically that, you know, you don't have to know what those frequencies are and, and pull through the specific ones, but you certainly can. Um, you, you, can just, you can just have the intent of bringing through whatever's in your highest and best or for the highest and best for the project person or place that you're working on. But you can also get in there with the very specifics um, and ask for a very specific energetics or you know, attunements, activations, clearings, whatever to happen that you know that are in there. It's kind of like working with water. When you put a ring around the water, you can just allow the water to carry what is in your highest and best. And that just is a soft intention. You put your water in the ring with just that soft intention of bringing through the energetics that are in the highest and best for you. Um, or you can get very specific. When you put your ring with your water, you can ask your water to carry, let's say, bergamot, rose quartz, um, lithium, whatever it is. You can ask the water to carry that for you. Um, 
And that's the same with working with, with any of the rings. Um, and let's see, are the silver tools, the silver chain suitable for people who have nickel allergy or costume jewelry allergies? Yes, so the silver chains that we carry, the, the, the necklace chains are all sterling silver. Um, so they're not, there's no nickel in them. And then all of our silver is, is either pure silver, 0.99 fine silver, or else it is sterling. And it'll be written on the web page what exactly components, like with the Divine I Am Taurus, the petals are sterling silver, where the outer ring is fine silver. Um, the alchemist pendants, you know, these are sterling silver. Um, so, yeah, we don't use any kind of a, um, of a base that is just electroplated in the silver. Um, let's see, in May, are the chalice rings stronger with the chalice energy? I thought all rings have the chalice energy now. Okay, so... Yes, yeah, so basically with the with all the tools that we create um, anymore, that energy of the chalice is totally it's it's in everything now. But to bring through just that chalice energy, which which I feel is the most powerful and transformative energy in this universe. You can bring through just that chalice energy, just that crystal clear, pure, pure light with a chalice ring. And then you don't have all the other stuff coming in. So the chalice rings are just the chalice energy versus like a golden fire ring that would have the chalice energy in there. You have all the other stuff, the golden fire stuff in there too, as well as the energy of the chalice. Um, so if you are looking to connect with just that energy, Again, you can still use any of the tools that we created. You don't necessarily have to have a chalice ring. You can use any of the tools we created and ask for just that energetics of the chalice to come through so that you can feel that and know that energy. Um, so you certainly can use any of the rings to bring through that chalice energy. But if you if you're just want to have a ring, a field that is dedicated with that chalice energy, in the chalice ring. Um, uh, Philip, is there a harmonizer Heka clasp in the works, or does the chalice Heka clasp work just as well as as the one would? Um, you know, we don't have a harmonizer Heka clasp in the works right now. Um, in that that chalice clasp, that chalice Heka clasp, um, my favorite also has the divine I am. Um, so it's, this one, it, it's kind of like, it's almost like it oscillates between the divine I am and the chalice is what this chalice clasp is doing. So it is bringing both the energetics through and the divine I am is, is, you know, for what, um, if you're using the harmonizer ring, for electromagnetics and things like that for for restructuring fields the divine i am is just as potent um but if you were looking at the harmonizer ring as as that way to infuse more consciousness into the physical um you know ag again those things are still happening the the infusing of the consciousness more into the physical is still occurring with the divine i am and the chalice um, it's just that harmonizer ring to me makes a great standalone ring for working with electromagnetics. It's the one that I put underneath my laptop that um, harmonizes the energy of the laptop best that I've seen is the harmonizer ring. Um, but then using the harmonizer ring beyond that, using the harmonizer ring in that set of trio for the alchemist set is just bringing all of that into the physical more. Um, sorry if any of that was confusing. Um, I really, we're working on rewriting content right now for the website. Well, still, and that's going to be some of the things that we address is to clear up some of, of that vagueness and the overlapping within the tools. Um, 
you know, to be able to better, simpler present like the energies, like the harmonizer, the golden fire, all of that. Um, Diane, are the tensor rings emitting scalar energy? No. Now, my understanding is scalar is electromagnetic. There are no electromagnetic fields in the tensor rings. They're, um, they're beyond electromagnetic fields. They're, they're more of a quantum field, the tensor fields are, versus a scalar field, which is electromagnetic waves, from my understanding. So basically, if you are using scalar tools and you use it with a tensor ring, to me, it is going to turn that scalar electromagnetic field more quantum. Um, so I feel they would work well together. Uh, will you be making a tool like the clasp on the personal alchemist set that can help hold all the smaller rings and pendants together and put it and in the meantime could you recommend a way to better hold multiple small tools together we're going to make a tool like the clasp oh gotcha so you're looking for a way to to basically use multiple multiple pendants like i always wear and to bring them all together with a clasp you know that's that really is that really is a thought because i mean for for me personally and for others i've you know we have struggled with trying to find a way to keep everything together on one and the class that we use on the alchemist pendants this is actually we we hand make these and they are soldered while they're welded together um the clasps on the alchemist sets and so um so they're they're a permanent clasp attachment now i did see somebody at a holistic fair the other day that had something really cool on and basically they had on a necklace that had a little joining clasp that they had on like three of our pendants and a couple of stones all together on this little clasp. And um, they had it, they had it custom made or it was a, it was a custom made piece that they purchased. Um, and so thank you for that inspiration. Um, to to find a way to create a a necklace piece that would have a class that you can add multiple tools on i think that would be fantastic oh and by the way we just finally have all of our as of yesterday um lucas my shop foreman and i went to um visit a jeweler who just cast a bunch of spinning bales for our new taurus pendant and there's been some new energies that have been waiting to come in but it's been waiting for me to shift um as well to help you know bring these in brenda's been seeing these these new energies this new energy waiting to come in and so we feel like everything is lining up right now to bring in this new energy into this new um taurus pendant that has a spinning bail on it that you can actually spin the Taurus. It's going to be a little while yet. Please give us at least mm, five, six weeks on this. It's been a long time coming, this uh, spinning bail and this new Taurus pendant, but it's going to be five or six weeks at least before we're able to um, have this one come through. Um, so let's see. Can I support crossed over people by placing their name picture in the Ascension Pyramid? Yes, so so Tam, you can, 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 so I'm assuming you mean crossing over people. So those who are, are um, haven't crossed over yet and those who have recently crossed over, totally, um, you can use their name, you just write their name on that piece of paper and when you place it inside of the Ascension Pyramid, it is your intention of connecting them with that energy. So when you put that piece of paper with their name in there, you have that intention connecting them with that pyramid. If they haven't crossed over yet, 
certainly if they come into that field that will assist them in crossing over and um, basically you can put anybody in those pyramids at all anybody living or deceased um, you can just do that again simply as you suggest by writing their name or their photograph uh, either one the name or the photograph of the person place thing animal plant and put that inside of the ascension pyramid and you'll be broadcasting to them uh, Nat, any thoughts on a smaller version of the Wings of Talk or in silver? Yes, actually, you have had a thought on that. I saw somebody here again at a holistic fair in Colorado a couple weeks ago that had on one of uh, Bill Reed's pieces. Now, Bill Reed was one of the original five with Slim Sperling who, who assisted in creating those original tensor rings and doing the research on them. Now, Bill passed away... Um, Oh gosh, what about four years ago now, it seems like, or three years ago. And um, I saw one of his pendants that looked like it was in silver. And it was a small, like a wings to talk. It was a small starburst that Bill made because Bill's the one who originally brought the starburst in um, with the assistance of, of another gentleman who created that, um, who created the template for it that, who drew everything up, did the research, the studying on it. And then he brought it to Bill and Bill brought it into the physical, the starburst. And then after Bill passed is when we made the wings of talk, we recreated the starburst. Um, and it has a ring around it, you know, just it's the wings of talk. But I did see the smaller version that was a pendant that looked pretty interesting. So that, yeah, I would love to make a, a necklace version of that. And that, you know, we'll definitely look into that. It's just working with um, this particular tool, we have to make it in steel in order for it to hold the energies. So that's just been a little bit of an issue of, we just have to get all new tools, grinders, everything, um, jigs, we have to have new jigs made and everything in order to create a smaller starburst that could then be electroplated. And then at that time, we could probably electroplate into copper or silver. Um, let's see, Christine, part one, as is too long to type. Awesome. All right. I've been working with a lot of your tools for the last six months and sleep within the six practitioner rings and also wear the alchemist pendant, quantum healer, divine I am Taurus 24-7. All the frequencies of your generators are around our house also. For the last two weeks, our household has seemed to be in complete chaos, and I've been trying to stay in my heart space and release, but I have no idea what is going on. Please, if you have any ideas or advice. Okay. So, you know, having all the tools around is not going to guarantee a field of peace. It will guarantee a field of transformation. Transformation can oftentimes come in chaos. So, and yes, when you are in the storm, when you are in the thick of it, it is tough to be in the heart space. So, the more you can try to just be in the heart, and allow so the whole new paradigm is allowing it's surrendering so my advice Christine would be you know the tools are all still holding a phenomenal space and they will bring a field of peace but it's not going to bring a field of peace over a field of transformation in order to allow the transformations to take place easier in any anything in your lives it is an allowing so what i mean by that is and, and this is something that's you know that we're just recently figuring out too and and doing the work anymore instead of doing the energy work we hold space for the allowing 
for other people, for situations, for ourselves, for aches, pains, anything. Okay, so let's go to your situation here, Christine. So you have all this chaos in your house. Let's say there's um, whatever that chaos is. Instead of trying to fight it or judge it, allow it, feel it, allow it to be, and just, just let it be um, in existence because it is coming up. So allow it to be in existence, but then at the same time, allowing it to no longer be in existence in the same brush stroke. So basically you are allowing by simply feeling that energy, feeling it, allowing it to be, feeling it, and then allowing it to dissipate. So basically, you want to not really embrace it, but you want it to allow it to be in your existence. But then you don't hold on to it. Then you let it go. So it's all in one brush stroke of allowing it to be and allowing it to not be. Allowing it to dissolve, dissipate, harmonize, clear, release. <sighs> Awesome. And I can feel you starting to do that right now. And for everybody, that is huge. And, and we'll step into more of a space of allowing here at the at the end of um, today. We'll just hold the space and um, we'll practice that allowing. All right. Another question. Does the silver water ring charge the water better than the other rings due to a designated purpose? How is it different compared to if I were to put a chalice ring around my water? So, you know, I've seen the silver water ring as, it's almost like it does charge the water faster. Um, I like that it is in direct contact with the water, the silver rings, because you can sit, you can place the silver rings into the water and they're not going to leach out, um, you know, anything that is non-beneficial. Unlike the copper rings where you put a copper ring in the water, you always have to muscle test or ask the body if you're getting too much copper because you can get too much copper when you are orderly ingesting. Even though the Ayurvedics have been doing it for thousands of years, you still need to check um, to make sure that you are not ingesting too much copper. So people use copper vessels, that's fantastic. Just muscle test, however you muscle test, or ask your body if you are, if you should be drinking the copper water that day. Um, but with the silver rings, you can put the silver ring directly in the water, and to me, it, it, it shifts the water faster. And the other question about, um, compared to using a chalice ring around the water, you know, I just love the chalice energies with the water. Um, for me, I, yeah, I just love the chalice energies with the water. That's my, my favorite one to use, um, because it just, it's almost like it makes the water sweeter and lighter and brighter, um, that chalice energy. So, um, and, and we haven't really played with this too much, but using the alchemist rings, I've always had a feeling that the alchemist rings will do the physical restructuring on water faster than the four to six hours that the traditional tensor rings have done. Um, you know, and I haven't sat with Brenda and verified that though. I've had other people who looked at it, you know, at the shows too. And that's exactly what they feel too, without any impromptu is that it's like, it's like supersonic bringing through those energies into the physical restructuring of the water. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I, I like the, um, that alchemist, or sorry, within that smaller alchemist set, the personal alchemist set, there is that chalice ring in there. And to me, that's a perfect size to use for, for working with the water. Um, you know, and the gals at Dancing With Water, they, they actually now started carrying a smaller earth resonance ring. It's a 12 gauge, it's a lot lighter gauge because they feel that, you know, water doesn't require these heavier gauges and these stronger fields that the heavier gauges create for the physical. Um, 
So it would be something for, for you to sit with too and, and how you feel about it, whether you feel that thicker gauge chalice ring would be more beneficial for the water for you versus a silver ring right in the water. Um, and so just go into the heart space and imagine your water with both and then just feel into it which one feels better to you. Um, it's amazing what we can get when we simply go into the heart space and feel into something with our imagination. All right. Uh, let's see. Will you be offering a way to upgrade the SITS pyramid if one wanted to the full-size pyramid by just offering the leg extensions needed to do so? Um, yes. So if you are, if you have the mini ascension pyramid or the sits pyramid and you would like to receive the the new poles uh to extend your current one um yeah just write to me and we we don't have anything on the website offering that and we'd have to go through and and kind of redo our our our, our time energy material sheet studies because we do a time study on the creation of all tools and that's how we set our pricing so um if you are interested in um taking a sits pyramid and adding the extensions onto us onto it yeah please do just write me um and on uh, email me and i'd be happy to look into what that cost would be because yes all the pyramids are are pretty much universal. The Sitz Pyramid, the Mini Ascension Pyramid, and the Full Size Ascension Pyramid all use the same parts and pieces, just the extra leg extensions on them. Uh, let's see, are you thinking of making a new 5D animator attunement and activation video with your new pyramids? Yes, you know, um, all, I have not done a video in over a year you guys as far as like the product videos or any new attunement activation videos and we are still working on getting our um studio here set up the um twist to say studios to be a place where people can come in it's kind of like an energy spa without foot baths an energy spa that you can come into and listen to the meditations and everything for all the, the different chambers that we have so that way you can progress your way through all the chambers. And certainly at that time, um, whatever those new meditations are, we'll certainly put those out for, for people to access. And, um, you know, I would like to start offering some new meditations. Um, and things have been in such a huge transitional space as you guys all know and everything and i feel like i'm finally starting to um step into something new here um and i just my intentions are as soon as i step through this that we're shifting everything 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 my personal the business the studio um, I feel like everything is in a huge shift right now. And when we come through, that's one of the things that I intend to do is to offer a lot more videos um, for people, especially the attunements, the activations, holding space. Uh, let's see. I've been seeing the Divine I Am generator, the silver blue light ring, the, the twisted in with the infinity at its center. So that would be the infinite light pendant. The harmony ring and the chalice rings, all sitting on the wings of talk, all spinning different directions. Any idea what that energy is? I've been guided to place this device in people. So, no, you know, it, it's amazing that the tools, um, the energetic aspect of the tools that come to us to be used and, um, you know, I would just say, just trust whatever it is that you are being shown and guided with, with those energy tools and how to use them. Um, because 
it's going to be different for for every person and um so please do just play is what i always tell everybody is just play oh. hi joey my daughter came to visit okay all right uh let's see next question does a small crystal perhaps programmed with an intention inside him alchemist set pendant expand its field so yes anytime that you take a tensor ring and you put any kind of a quartz any kind of a quartz inside of the ring instead of creating a column of light it will then expand it out more it's not like it turns into a tensor field generator and goes out in all directions but it does expand that into more of a call out of the column and more into like a, a funnel shape, I guess you call it. And so anytime you add any crystal inside of, inside of any of the tensor rings, you will turn it from, a, from just a column into a, into a larger shape, into a larger field. And when you do put your intentions into the crystal and you put that inside of the rings, then of course the crystal, excuse me, the crystal is carrying those intentions for you so actually that is a great way that you can use a tensor ring just a ring to program it is by programming the crystal placing placing your intentions in the crystal and then placing the crystal in the ring let's see i do the holy grail vortex meditation daily what twisted sage tools would you recommend to power that up I usually do it alone rather than within a group. So the Holy Grail Vortex is that which um, came through with Mary Hardy. And the Holy Grail Vortex is basically um, you speak these stanzas and you create this vortex, this counter-rotating vortex. And um, then there's a column of light in it. So um, what I would suggest to amp up your Holy Grail Vortex meditation is to do to also add in a column of light from the golden fire and light wand. Uh, the way that we teach to anchor the column of lights, the columns of light is I would do a column of light and that holy grail vortex into the same space. And those two will harmonize well together. Um, also, if you are doing the holy grail vortex, depending on your purpose of, of doing it, if you are creating a space within your space, um, you could also, what I'm seeing is like a, a practitioner ring or any size of ring, preferably a larger ring, is just sitting that on the floor um, and using that as the focal point for doing that Holy Grail Vortex meditation to create that, that vortex, that column of energy there. And then that tensor ring is going to help to amplify that as well. And if you're doing that Holy Grail Vortex by distance and you use your imagination visualization, it's the same as anchoring a column of light. So again, you just anchor your column of light and then do the vortex or vice versa, whichever you feel, or perhaps you can do them at the same time. All right. Are you going to be offering bigger silver rings for the pyramids? And have you tried the silver out on the pyramids you have in the studio? Um, no, actually, I have not tried the silver rings on a pyramid. Um, and as far as offering larger rings in silver, it's pretty cost prohibitive. I mean, um, you know, if we were going to make a practitioner size in a silver ring, we're looking at $1,000 just in silver. Um, you know, silver is, is silver is pretty spendy. And... Um, you know, when we start making larger rings, because we always have to twist the wire, so we have extra amount. Because if we if we don't um, twist the wire where there's not enough to cut that measurement we're looking for, then we just wasted that wire. So basically, we always have to twist that wire so that we have a little bit of a tail on each end, um, because it's also tighter twist there. So. For, so for creating a larger silver ring, there would be a bit of waste of silver in there. Of course, we recycle that. Um, but I feel larger rings would be rather cost prohibitive. And even when it gets into electroplating, um, 
you know, I've, I've struggled with electroplating silver and so I have not electroplated silver in years and we may, may or may not get back into that. Um, but, you know, really making it out of pure silver would definitely be the way to go. Um, and we, we may eventually here, maybe next spring, um, you know, once we have a little bit more money in for research development style of thing, um, you know, for that cause, we may look into, you know, doing some larger rings just to, just to play with. But right now it's just, it's a little cost prohibitive to, to work with that larger silver gauge. Uh, let's see, I have a Royal Rife, Royal Rife app on my phone. Do you have any feedback on how Rife frequencies work with the tensor fields? So basically, um, any of the frequency emitting devices, whether it's, it's the Rife frequencies or radionics or the Spooky 2 or crystal bowls or um, 432 sounds on your computer, whatever it is, the tensor fields are working with, um, they are working with the, um, not only the, the carrier waves, the physical sound waves, um, they are taking a physical sound wave and changing the color of sound. So they're changing the energetics of a sound wave, of a physical sound wave. But they are also changing the energetics of a quantum wave, such as radionics with an AM transmission or um, your, you know, working with your Rife frequencies. So definitely if you are using your uh, app on your phone for the Rife frequencies, um, you know, and placing your phone, putting a ring around it or else on your speaker, putting a generator around it or a smaller ring, however you can do that, it is going to shift the energetics of that broadcast. It's going to harmonize with that tensor field. So not only is your broadcast, um, will it go farther, it'll be cleaner, clearer, um, but you're also harmonizing with the energies of the ring and you'll be bringing the energies of the ring along with that, that broadcast as well. So they go hand in hand beautifully. Um, let's see, another question. Um, Victoria, hi, last week I wore a ruby necklace on a gold chain along with a tensor ring on a copper chain. I woke up the next day with a really painful rash in my neck. Is there an interaction between copper and gold that you know of? Um, you know, there, there is something with copper and gold, and I'm not sure what that is, just that I know that when you electroplate gold onto copper, the copper will basically um, alchemize the gold. It turns it copper colored. So I'm not sure what the alchemization process is with copper and gold. And as far as wearing a gold chain and a copper chain together, I, I could not tell you either. What I first felt with that is that the copper chain was either coated or was a pure copper or something like that. That's, that's what I feel with that is that, that it was the, the copper chain itself is, is, is just what I feel with that. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't be much more help there. Uh, let's see, does the Divine I Am Taurus work in the pyramids the same as the Cosmic Sun Disk? Does it make it stronger if it works? Do you need both to make it work? So no, actually you can totally use the Divine I Am Taurus in place of the Cosmic Sun Disk. Now, I've been trying to figure out away and then now that i'm not doing running all the time doing um holistic fairs i'm kind of done with that for a little bit and and everything in general i'm going to be kind of sticking around home for the most part um i'd like to start working on making a some kind of a device to hold the pyramids open because so like for the ascension pyramids that cosmic sun disc sits in there in that cradle to keep your legs apart at the right angle. So, so in order to keep your legs out, there has to be that larger cosmic sun disc inserted in there. 
but where the divine I am Taurus is a lot smaller than that cosmic sun disk, I'm trying to find a way to physically hold that smaller Taurus in place in that cradle. So physically, the, the, uh, the divine I am Taurus isn't really working very well physically with the pyramid, but energetically, yes, it's fantastic. Um, energetically, I'm not really seeing a huge difference that I'm not feeling the huge difference right at the, you know, right now, just looking at it with the cosmic sun disc versus the divine I am Taurus within the pyramid. They feel like they're bringing through the, the same energetic. Um, all right, jumping over here to chat. Pennsylvania, California, Florida. Oh, hey, Samson. Southern California. Awesome. We have people from all over. Um, let's see. And just checking over here on the chat side. I see there's a few questions over here on the chat side. Um, and I'll try to catch all those. Um, let's see. Some, uh, somebody asked, I just bought a small chalice ring bangle. Is it activated already, or is there some place on your website that has an activation for it? And what does it help you with? So all of the tools that we create are already activated. They are, they arrive functioning, working, tensor tools, bringing through all the energetics that each one of the tools does. Now the chalice ring, um, you know, and some people feel certain tools more than other tools and some people will feel quite the opposite on the tools that they'll feel something here but not here so basically it is kind of where you are tuned into what you will maybe be able to feel and experience on the physical level or else have the knowing on the energetic level all the tools are just a little bit different for each person now with the chalice ring and you're asking about what the chalice bangle can help you with keep the keep the tensor ring that chalice bangle with you all the time sleep with it under the pillow or still wearing it um, and basically it is holding a field for the raising of the frequency and vibration of your entire being physical mental emotional soul level all the way through all lifetimes um, it is just going to be raising shifting everything faster than we would if we did not have the tool because everything is shifting more consciousness is coming into the physical more your soul light is coming into the physical and that is creating a whole different world for each and every one of us not only individually but collectively and so these tools are simply helping to hold space for that to occur with a little bit more grace and ease. Um, all right. Awesome, Christine, I'm glad you felt that shift as we were talking about earlier with the allowing. Um, so let's see, and then uh, Donna's asking again about um, the chalice along with the Holy Grail Vortex and the intentions. Um, so let's see, what if I put my small chalice bangle on top of my natural quartz rock in the middle of my medicine wheel and recite the Holy Grail Vortex prayer with my intentions always for good and harm to no one? Will that work for physical healing, hurricanes, anything to do with weather? Basically, it's what your intention is when you are creating that Holy Grail vortex and you place your tools there. Um, whatever your intention is when you are doing that work is what's going to be broadcast. And, you know, anymore, to me, the intentions need to be soft intentions versus a hard intention. A hard intention is when you have your laundry list of very specific things that you want to happen. 
with those laundry lists of very specific things come from our human perspective. When we can step into the heart and we just are doing it from the heart, we have your soul knows the intention that you are trying to create. So when we do something from the heart, like placing our, our ring on, on your medicine wheel and you're doing the Holy Grail vortex, just doing it from the heart with surrender, with allowing of whatever is in the highest and best to come through. That way you as your human perspective have stepped aside and you are creating something greater. Um, all right. And then let's see, stepping over here to questions. And I think this will be our last question for the day. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the new tool and we'll do a, um, a quick meditation for allowing. I just got a sits pyramid and I have only the smaller torus. Is there a way by measurements to, to know if it's at a right angle to be creating a field? Um, so when you, if you have your sits pyramid and you don't have that, um, that torus, basically just expand the legs out as far as they go. There is a, a wire cross member in there. And it's that wire cross member that basically as you expand that pyramid out and, and, you're, and you've taken all that you put tension onto that cross wire, then you know that the legs are at the right measure or at the right angle. Now also with this, it is very forgiving. Um, when you have the ascension pyramid, the base does not have to be exactly square. It can be kind of rectangular. Um, you know, if one leg is not at the right angle, it is all okay because the energetics are there anyway. Um, so it's kind of like a tensor field generator in that, you know, it does not have to be perfectly symmetrical on the physical for the energetic part of it to, to be fully functional. That's the way these pyramids are, is they are a quantum tool that is brought into the physical, anchored into the physical. So if your physical is not exact, it is okay because all of the energetics of it are very much in alignment. Um, so what I've told people too, is if you get an ascension pyramid and it's just laying in a pile, it is still gonna be holding that energy and expanding that out. Um, so yeah, don't worry if any things aren't, <clears throat> aren't perfect. Um, okay. So, uh, a quick talk, uh, a quick talk about talk, <laughs> the wings of talk. So we have a new tool that just came out. Well, no, it hasn't came out. We just electroplated these. It was just made yesterday. We just worked with the energetics last night. It's going to be a couple of weeks before we have the new wings of talk. Um, and we'll keep the old wings of talk still, obviously, but this one is a heavier ring, heavier gauged wires that are in it. Um, there's no specific frequencies in here. This is basically just holding a space. Um, it was very interesting when Brenda and I were working with it last night. So Heimdall is the guardian to our etheric tools. He is the protector of all of the higher dimensional tools that we create. And then Talk is the one who was basically when we created the wings of Talk. Talk is the one that this the wings of Talk held the field for Talk and these other master beings from this universe beyond duality, not within this universe in duality, that are able to come in and hold space and work with you soul to soul. Um, and talk is just a master healer of these blue plasma winged beings. Um, and they're not, and these beings are, aren't like the blue avians or talked about anywhere else. Um, so these master beings um, are just coming in to hold space where the new wings of talk, which is called on the wings of talk, on the wings of talk, this particular tool, Heimdall and talk created a partnership where they co-created this tool um, and brought it through. And basically it's just, it's stronger. It's allowing 
talk and and the other ascended beings in this um you know in this other space place this other um universe to step in to be able to be of even greater assistance in this holding the space and again these beings these master beings not really ascended beings these master beings all work with the soul so it is your soul that chooses what is allowed what is what's being worked with it's it's a co-creation with your soul and these master beings like talk um so it can never bring harm it's never um you know when when you're working as the human again this is so far beyond our perspective and understanding as the human that it is totally the soul that is working there um but anyway this this new wings of talk it's um where the other wings of talk was created specifically in the beginning to help um, uh, energy workers who were having problems clearing entities with their clients. We made the wings of talk to basically do that clearing work of the entities of soul contracts of clearing ghosts, waywards, you know, and doing that type of clearing. This new wings of talk, the type of clearing it is doing is just like what the alchemist sets are doing with the divine I am taurus what the divine i am generator is doing is it is going into the core of what the issue is through lifetimes and releasing that at the core um and so like with brenda when she first um tuned into this one last night as they were bringing it in the energetic one um she just felt like this suction it just came in and it just sucked out a bunch of crap that she still had um that it just comes in and, and does even deeper cleaning it just sucks it out um and in its space is that peace that peace beyond what we know of as peace this peace is basically the soul um the zero point of the soul <sighs> the soul and its wisdom you know it's not um the experiences of lifetimes and situations this is the soul and that's where that peace is um so anyway on the wings of talk look for this to be out here in the next couple of weeks and uh, we're just starting to do the time studies on them today since we you know um we just assembled a few of these just to play with and pretty blown away by them so anyway the wings of talk will be coming out again the second version all right so let's do a meditation of allowing so basically what we do is we go into the heart space so i'll walk everybody into the heart space again and from the heart space we're going to um we're going to have you choose a situation think of something that is whether chaotic or painful you just don't want to look at um, something that maybe causes you reactions. You know, you know what it is. You, you know that thing. Um, so we're going to go in the heart space and then we're going to allow that thing to be. And at the same brush stroke, we're going to allow that thing to dissipate. We're going to allow that thing to not be. So here we go. Closing your eyes taking in that breath from the earth into the heart taking in that breath from creation into the heart taking that breath from both earth and creation at the same time as they come in to support the light of the earth the light of creation the light of you expands more asking your light your soul's light your soul to step more fully into the present into the here now all that you are as a soul as that is stepping in we hold this space together the space of that chalice the space of the soul 
the space of all that you are. Now that thing that you need to allow, allow it to be, feel it, all of its emotions, good, bad, ugly, beautiful. Allow it to be, if it's a person, allow the person to be with all their foibles, all their stuff, allow them to be. Allow your emotions around that person or situation to be just as they are, no judgment, allowing it to be. As you breathe it in, allowing it to be, now just allow it to shift, allow it to dissipate. We're not hard pushing, we're not doing anything, we are allowing. Just allowing it to be in your field and allowing it to just dissolve away. Keep playing with this. As anything comes up, make it a habit. Being in the heart space, allowing your feels, allowing the person to be, allowing the situation to be, allowing the drama to be, but not holding on to it. In the same brush stroke, allowing it to no longer be. Beautiful. All right, keep playing and we will see you again soon. All right, take care.